When these lionesses set an ambush for the buffaloes, they didn't know what awaited them. Instead of panic fleeing, the hoofed animals chose furious resistance. They literally scattered the predators, who had to panically hide in the bushes. Now you'll see other cases where buffaloes demonstrated their strength. The African buffalo is one of the strongest herbivores in the world. Not only because individual males can weigh just a little under a ton, but also due to the desperate bravery of these fighters. Just watch how a buffalo battles opponents significantly larger in size. This rhinoceros is about six to seven times more massive than the buffalo, but the hoofed animal boldly goes for a head-on attack. It seems like their body sizes are almost the same, but in reality they're not. The buffalo is quite tall thanks to its long limbs, but in fact the rhinoceros has a clear advantage. The buffalo knows this, but it doesn't stop him. The buffalo even managed to resist an elephant. All for the defense of its herd, where the animal plays the role of a leader. The buffalo fiercely attacks the elephant, which is ten times more massive, and could easily knock the opponent into the ground with a single blow. Fortunately for the hoofed animal, the elephant turned out to be peaceful and stepped back. Just like this one. The elephant seems to be amused when facing this buffalo. But the big-eared giant underestimated the opponent. The buffalo doesn't retreat and uses its horns. However, it ended without injuries. Probably the buffalo understands what an enraged elephant could do to him. The main weapon of the buffalo is its powerful horns. Their shape is perfect for self-defense. The sharp tips are arranged to cover the eyes and simultaneously allow the buffalo to attack predators if they latch onto the throat from the side. The horns taper sharply and can inflict dreadful puncture wounds. The base of the horns is very massive and dense, and it's located in front of the head and is exposed as the horns curve to the sides and slightly backward. Therefore, the buffalo uses the base of its horns as a powerful battering ram for frontal attacks. The tips of the horns seem to catch the victim of the attack, making it extremely difficult to dodge the buffalo's attack at close range. Interestingly enough, during clashes, males can accidentally entangle their horns. One can only hope that they can free themselves from this entanglement. However, horns are not the only weapon of this animal. Weighing over a ton is the norm for an African buffalo. But some individual tough males can reach a weight almost twice as much. With their physical abilities, buffaloes use their weapons boldly. They often fight among themselves for control of the herd and for females, but most importantly, these animals are not afraid to fight predators and give them fierce resistance. Buffaloes look quite muscular, and despite their mass, they remain agile and nibble animals with excellent reactions. So, besides horns, they use other ways to combat aggressors, primarily their hooves. A buffalo can trample a careless predator that approached too closely. Although buffaloes rarely ram, they can kick with their legs to a considerable height relative to their body. The main enemy of the African buffalo is the lion. These carnivorous cats are strong enough to attack buffaloes even one-on-one. -on -one. A lion can bring down a young buffalo to the ground and reach its throat, then strangle it despite the buffalo's attempts to break free. Although hunting buffalo is one of the most dangerous adventures for lions, as even solitary hooves possess tremendous strength. The buffalo can easily lift a lioness on its horns, make her feel like a bird, and slam her head down to the ground with one blow. Moreover, if the buffalo can break free from the grip, it will undoubtedly attempt to attack lions that are too close and are unlikely to evade. Then the buffalo can simply scatter the lions as pleasantly as a bowling ball scatters pins when hitting the center. But a pride of lions poses an even more serious threat, as several lionesses can almost guarantee overcoming a single buffalo. Fortunately, herbivores often come to each other's aid, so the main tactic of lions when hunting them is not stealth, but intimidation. 
lions must instill panic among the hoofed animals, making them succumb to fear and start fleeing chaotically. Then it's possible to snatch one animal and attack it amid the stir of retreating buffaloes. If the herd doesn't flinch, it might provide collective resistance. Just look at these impressive shots. Buffaloes gathered like an army and surged like a black wave onto the predators. It's challenging to count the number of hoofed animals participating in the attack, but it goes into the dozens. Even if a single buffalo can resist two or three lionesses, in the case of such overwhelming numerical superiority of herbivores, predators have no chance. Buffaloes successfully push back the lions. Interestingly enough, hoofed animals don't fight as chaotically and thoughtlessly as one might expect. They form a circle that gradually tightens around the lions. Predators take a circular defense. Buffaloes attack episodically. One animal steps forward, carries out a furious but brief attack, and quickly returns back. Allies nearby cover its shoulders, preventing lions from launching a counterattack. Then another animal repeats the same move at a different point in the formation, and so on several times. This tactic wears out the lions. Now the predators are on the verge of panic. The task of the buffaloes is to drive dangerous neighbors out of this territory. Allowing lions to stay means they will attack. But later, when they can camouflage themselves in the grass, the victims of the predators will be the weakest and youngest individuals. To prevent this, buffaloes are ready for anything. If lions had flinched and fled, herbivores would have simply trampled them. Fortunately for the predators, they managed to maintain composure and withdrew gradually. But they clearly underestimated the persistence of the buffaloes, who practically pushed them from the shore into the water. These lions weren't so lucky. There was no water barrier nearby that would have saved them from final encirclement. Buffaloes closed in the circle and started attacking the enemies. Hoofed animals acted cautiously so as not to accidentally injure each other due to the momentum and inertia. Buffaloes rushed at the lions from different sides, delivered furious blows, and retreated back to their comrades who timely opened up and let them into the depth of the herd. This broke the defensive formation of the lions, which was a fatal mistake. The predators had no chances. Buffaloes didn't chase them away. They decided to fight to the end and finished off the lions for the next hour. Although the cats fiercely defended themselves and tried to evade, the final outcome of the confrontation was only a matter of time. Buffaloes destroyed a significant part of the pride. As strong and fierce as a buffalo may be, it doesn't know how to breathe underwater like a fish. This obvious weakness is exploited by the crocodile, which attacks the hoofed animals when they cross rivers or come to drink water. Coping in a one-on-one -on -one battle with a buffalo can only be achieved by a crocodile at the peak of its strength. Adult, mature, is still relatively young one. The length of the reptile's body exceeds that of the buffalo, and the crocodile's jaws can accommodate the entire head of the hoofed animal. But in terms of pure physical strength, the buffalo still surpasses the predator due to its much greater mass. Therefore, the crocodile uses cunning. It quietly approaches its prey, grabs it with its phenomenally strong jaws, and drags it to the bottom. The reptile's goal is to drown the hoofed animal. But this buffalo is clearly against such a turn of events. Although the sudden appearance of a terrifyingly scary monster frightened the herd, and no one came to the aid of the buffalo, it found the strength and dealt with the threat itself. It seems like the crocodile is winning. It took advantage of the element of surprise to the fullest, lured the buffalo into the depths, made it lower its head, but the will to live did not leave the hoofed animal. It resisted desperately. A more sophisticated cardiovascular system makes mammals more enduring than most reptiles. Therefore, the buffalo could withstand the crocodile's main attack, and the reptile simply exhausted itself and attempts to drown the prey. The hoofed animal stayed on the surface long enough not to suffocate. It was also tired, but its hooves began to threaten the reptile, so it finally released the buffalo and swam as far away from the threat as possible. In the end, the wounded buffalo swam to the shore to regain strength next to the herd and rest. 
Meanwhile, the crocodile and powerless fury watched from a distance, only now realizing that it had made a mistake in choosing its target. Perhaps attacking a less strong and stubborn buffalo would have been more successful. But this individual turned out to be too much for the crocodile to handle. This is one of the most impressive scenes of a tiger facing an Asian buffalo, captured on camera. The striped predator surpasses even the lion both in size and sheer physical power. And its honed skills, incredible reflexes, and agility enable it to hunt buffaloes weighing around a ton alone. The tiger managed to unexpectedly attack the herd, induce panic, and then, in a powerful leap, bring down an adult and strong buffalo. The force of such a pounce could break the neck of a smaller animal, but the buffalo stood its ground. The striped predator didn't give up. It was prepared for an exhausting struggle. Its fangs closed on the buffalo's trachea and gradually constricted it. The hoofed animal tried to break free, but the tiger was too strong. However, the predator was unprepared for the turn of events. The tiger underestimated the buffalo, just like the entire herd. They managed to overcome the initial fear and regain composure before the tiger could strangle the buffalo. They attacked the tiger and managed to fend off their comrade from the predator at the very last moment. The tiger's in shock. It didn't really expect such a fierce resistance and is now forced to flee from the entire herd. Though bison looks quite different from ordinary bulls, they're actually close relatives. They belong to the same subfamily, which also includes yaks, gars, canna antelopes, and several others. Moreover, both bulls and bison share a similar lifestyle. Both species are herding, strong, and stand out among other hoofed animals with their fierceness and bold character. The main enemy of the American bison in its natural environment is the wolf. The beginning of the wolf's attack on bison resembles the first stage of lions hunting African buffaloes. The predator's goal is to make the hoofed animals flinch and start panicked fleeing. All herbivores are naturally quite skittish, but bulls, bions, and their relatives are much braver than, for example, zebras or antelopes. Making them panic is challenging. Predators have to stealthily approach the herd to make a sudden attack at the right moment, desperately exposing themselves from under the cover of vegetation. When bison see the sudden appearance of a large number of enemies, the hoofed animals are bewildered for sure, because they really don't know how exactly where the wolves are, how many of them there are, and what if a gray predator is behind the nearby bush? What if there was a whole army of them over here? The initial fright turns into panic into the entire herd of bison runs in one direction, exploding flanks and rear. Only in such a situation can wolves begin pursuing the weakest individuals. The sick, the old, the young, and helpless, those who fall behind, that is. If bisons didn't succumb to panic, they would form a defensive formation where the strongest individuals stand side by side and don't allow predators to come too close. The weakest ones stay behind them in safety. Such care is worthy of respect, don't you agree? But the continuation of the wolves' hunt for the bison herd differs from the tactics of cats. Wolves rely not on a lightning-fast attack and quick success, but on winning through a long chase. They can chase a bison for many miles, thanks to incredible endurance. And when the animal is exhausted, only then do they surround it for the final attack. It's just that they underestimated the endurance of this bison. It turns out it can resist a whole pack of wolves, even being by itself. During the defense, the bison will strike the wolves with its horns. Although the bison's horns are quite short, thanks to the powerful neck muscles, if the bison can deliver at least one precise blow, it will drive the wolf into the ground up to the neck. No wonder the predators scatter in different directions. They did not suspect their prey had such a reserve of strength. Perhaps the wolves already regretted not choosing a younger and less experienced individual. In general, bisons can surprise not only wolves. Due to their very massive shoulders and large heads, their bodies seem too powerful to be elegant. Well, bison is indeed incredibly strong, but at the same time, it possesses unexpected agility. 
there is evidence that these giants, whose weight can reach just under a ton, can jump over an obstacle about six to seven feet, up to two meters, with minimal running, and they can run for hours in deep snow, swim in icy water, and easily maneuver between trees when the herd passes through dense forest. Especially impressive are the clashes between bison and the sole predator that can defeat an adult individual alone, the bear. Grizzlies are probably the most dangerous carnivores in North America. They reach a weight of a third of a ton, roughly equivalent to four adult men. A short tail and a very thick layer of fat, along with dense fur, create the image of a slightly clumsy and slow beast. In reality, at short distances, a grizzly is only slightly slower than a horse. But the main thing is its combat qualities. Because the bear can stand on its hind legs for quite a long time, it possesses hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Each strike of a grizzly's front paw can break a deer's spine. In just one minute, a bear can deliver several dozen such crushing blows, all at different angles and from different sides. Additionally, the paws are armed with huge curved claws that easily strip bark from century-old oaks. Often, a bear grabs its prey with these powerful paws, lunges at it with its full weight, and then seizes it with its jaws. After such a grip, only a few manage to escape. The bison is one of those few. Just look at how fiercely it defends itself and against the bear. It seems that the predator's devastating paw strikes make no impression on the hoofed animal at all. This is not entirely accurate. The bison is indeed too robust and massive for the bear to inflict critical damage with a single strike. However, the hoofed animal feels the claws of the predator, but it doesn't panic or blindly retreat. The bison fights back, and now the bear begins to understand that it made a mistake in choosing its prey. The bison rams the bear several times, uses its short but sharp horns, and attempts to trample the bear. In such duels, herbivores don't always come out victorious. However, the bison has the highest chance of defeating the bear compared to any other inhabitant of North America. Moreover, the bison can fight for a very long time and resist the predator until it gets tired. This way, the hoofed animal will preserve its life. And if there are several bison, the main thing for them is not to succumb to the initial shock of the appearance of the huge predator. If the animals can resist together, then the bear's chances of winning drop to absolute zero. A herd of bison can trample such a predator like a grizzly. The fighting skills of bison are honed in battles with each other. This is typical for horned herbivores, to fight among themselves during the mating season or for the position of a leader in the herd. Not only bulls do this, but also deer, as well as many antelopes. Generally, horned herbivores use their weapons against their own kind much more often than against predators. Upon spotting which, most will try to escape. But judging by the behavior of the bison, these intraspecific conflicts are like training for a battle with carnivorous aggressors. After all, although bison can be prone to panic, they often put up fierce resistance to predators. And during battles between males, they gain the necessary experience. Moreover, their duels look impressive. Notice how the two powerful beasts weighing almost a ton each almost simultaneously rush forward for a head-on attack. It seems that a shockwave, like an explosion, will follow their collision. Bison raise whole clouds of dust, maneuver, jab, and ram each other with incredible determination. But at the same time, such duels rarely lead to serious injuries for the opponents. Even when one bison loses, the other finds enough restraint to stop in time and not finish off the defeated opponent. Perhaps the reason lies in the cold-bloodedness of the animals. Or maybe it's because the strength of bison lies in the collective defense of the entire herd, so they avoid unnecessary injuries. Yesterday's rivals will stand side by side against a whole pack of wolves tomorrow. So the hooved animals need to be confident in the strength of their comrades. What are your thoughts on this? Why do stallions, during duels for leadership in a herd of wild horses, often fatally deprive the losers of life, while bulls and bison do not? Share your opinion in the comments. We're interested to know what you think. 
In the wild, the habitats of bison and rhinoceroses do not overlap. Bison are found in North America. A small population of their very close relative, the European bison, has survived in Eastern Europe, in the territories of Poland, Ukraine, and Belarus. Rhinoceroses live in Africa, and several scarce subspecies inhabit Asia. So the encounter, made possible only through human efforts, caused a real shock to these herbivores. They don't know what kind of animal it is, and remain perplexed. Well, here it becomes clear that bison have much better nerves than rhinoceroses. The enormous armored beast decided to test its neighbors and went for a direct attack. Not a single bison flinched. A couple of short movements in response, and the rhinoceros runs away in panic. It seems to be going hysterical. The bison couldn't be intimidated, and the armored but vulnerable giant decided that a swift retreat would be the best move. Hyenas are among the most dangerous and effective predators in Africa. They are smaller than many competitors like lions and leopards, but they have advantages of their own. First and foremost is their numbers. Hyenas gather in entire small armies. If a pride can send three or four lionesses against a buffalo, then the hyenas will attack with a dozen or even a dozen and a half. Moreover, do not consider hyenas weak. Their jaws can crush large bones. Their hunting tactics are characterized by cruelty that yields results. While panthers try to reach the throat of the prey and simply strangle it, hyenas can circle around the prey for hours, swoop in, bite, and retreat. The goal of hyenas is to inflict maximum ragged wounds that bleed and weaken the opponent. Hyenas are very enduring, and even if several individuals get tired, reinforcements will come. Hyenas can hold the prey in a ring and not let it go for a long time. This is reminiscent of a siege, where before the decisive storm, the enemy exhausts the defenders with diversions and terror. This tactic may seem repulsive to us, but there is no place for human morality in the animal world. After all, hyenas' cubs wait for their parents in their lairs. Do you disagree? Share your opinion in the comments. Moreover, even against a huge number of opponents, buffaloes are not willing to surrender. Hyenas clearly underestimated the endurance and fierceness of their enemy. The buffalo acts very decisively. The typical tactic of hyenas is to have several animals attack the victim one by one. When a larger but surrounded opponent lunges at one hyena, the other will bite into its back. However, hyenas underestimated the cohesion of buffaloes. These hoof animals cover each other and don't allow comrades to attack from behind. Even a huge pack of hyenas hesitates when faced with several buffaloes at once. Although predators wisely chose a calf as prey, the adult herbivores don't allow them to approach and even touch the calf. When the hoofed animals cover each other, they can easily scatter the enemies. No matter how long hyenas may besiege such a herd, buffaloes are much more stubborn. Here, a female defends the calf from an entire pack. The calf managed to keep calm, not running away, and staying in the ground between its mother's legs. This saved it. The female buffalo bravely defends the offspring and drives away a whole gang of predators for as long as it takes for the hyenas to finally realize that this prey is not for them. Besides strength, buffaloes have other disadvantages. If a hoofed animal decides to settle the score with a particularly annoying hyena, its attack from the rear won't be stopped even by other aggressors. A bull can simply trample a hyena and, while ignoring other bites, switch to the rest of the attackers only after finishing off the first enemy. A very high pain threshold is an undeniable advantage for the hoofed animal. Moreover, the bull has such a serious advantage in physical strength that even dozens of hyenas are sometimes not enough to defeat it. It's challenging to find a more aggressive herbivore than a hippopotamus. These fierce giants consider their water territories private and can attack any other animal that approaches without apparent reason. While hippos often tolerate the presence of other hoofed animals, they lose patience if provoked. 
If an impala makes too much noise, for example, the hippo promptly breaks its spine with its incredible jaws. If a zebra irritates the hippo by spending too much time in its water, then the giant charges and drowns the unfortunate animal, even though the hippo recently protected them from predators. However, there are animals that couldn't care less about the mood swings of hippos. African buffaloes. Despite the buffalo towering over the hippo, don't be deceived at all. The bull's weight is less than a ton, while the hippo's weight is roughly four times more. The aggressor knows this, so it threatens the buffalo and aggressively charges. Yet the buffalo is a family-oriented animal. While it may not overpower the hippo, it's the largest and strongest in its group. Therefore, the courageous bull gives its relatives a chance to retreat and takes on all the hippo's rage. Do agree, such loyalty is admirable. The hippo opens its mouth wide enough to fit the entire head of the buffalo along with its enormous horns, a true battle of titans. But these intimidation attempts make no impression on the buffalo at all. It stands its ground, covering the retreat of its family to a safe place. Fortunately, the fierce attack ended for the buffalo without serious injuries. It withstood the hippo's pressure and even managed to resist it. Defeating the massive hippo was impossible. The strengths were too uneven, and the buffalo's horns weren't sharp enough to penetrate the thick, fat-layered and well-protected hippo skin. Yet in a battle against the hippo, retreating and preserving life without serious injuries is already a victory. The hippo's tactic is straightforward. It wants to overturn the opponent, knock it to the ground, or turn it in a way that makes it easier to grab with its huge jaws. The hippo doesn't acknowledge short bites. It grabs the victim with its enormous tusks, then shakes it from side to side like a wet cloth. However, the buffalo managed to avoid this fatal fate and retreat it following its family's safety soon after they found refuge. This hippo clearly sees itself as a true monster. It got angry when a whole herd of buffaloes approached the water where it was resting. The hippo doesn't want to see guests and considers the lake its own. Sawa decided to show these buffaloes who's the boss. It looks impressive. A powerful creature the size of a car emerges from the water, roars with fury, shakes its huge mouth from side to side, creates real waves, and rushes onto the shore, and suddenly realizes that its performance didn't impress the buffaloes at all. The hippo is alone, while there's a whole crowd of buffaloes, and they don't like it when someone tries to intimidate them. When the hippo was already on the shore, it suddenly understood that not only did the buffaloes not retreat, but they encircled it and lowered their heads with enormous horns and stared somewhat oddly. Anyone would feel uneasy in this situation. The hippo deflated like a balloon, slowly losing air. And just moments ago, it was ready to scatter bulls like kittens and now it lowers its head, attempting to appear small and inconspicuous. As if he's saying, what, me? I uh, just yawned, stumbled, and rushed onto the shore. I don't pose any threat at all. And by the way, I got scared by a fish. I should have stirred things up. Uh, I like you guys. Uh, yeah, well, goodbye. Under the unwavering gaze of a dozen buffaloes, the hippo cautiously returns to the water where it feels more confident. What do you think of this amusing scene? Let us know your opinion in the comments. The buffalo managed to assess the situation in time and understand how to resist the hippo. Firstly, it needed to withstand the first direct attack and get as close to the front of the enemy as possible. So it couldn't use its mass advantage and had a harder time utilizing its jaw power. Secondly, the buffalo crouched low and dove under the hippo's head to strike its neck with its horns when the opponent threatened with its tusks. Quite an excellent move. Although the hippo's neck is thick, the sagging skin easily indicates it's a sensitive area. As a result, even a single buffalo managed to resist the aggressive hippo, making it retreat and seize the attack. 
Slender legs, powerful body, and a trailing slender tail. Judging by the silhouette, the bull appears to be exclusively a land animal. Indeed, wildebeests live on land, but they are excellent swimmers. They navigate well in water, overcoming aquatic obstacles, unlike domestic cows. However, in Asia, there's a type of cattle that loves water even more than other hoofed animals. That's why they're called the Asian water buffalo. Besides grazing near water bodies, these animals possess a true superpower. They can hold their breath and dive for several minutes. The sight of their enormous horned heads emerging gracefully from the water after a few minutes of submersion is pretty impressive, isn't it? However, Asian water buffaloes are not only adept swimmers, but also fierce fighters capable of withstanding serious pressure. Here, a buffalo is engaging in a battle with the yak, Although these species are relatively close relatives, it doesn't prevent healthy competition. The collision between the adult bulls and yaks resembles a battle of two tectonic plates. Both sides display incredible stubbornness and willpower. They employ an interesting tactic. It seems they attack straightforwardly and can only use a ramming strategy here. Indeed, they stand firmly on their legs as if their hooves are anchored in the ground. It feels like not even a tsunami could make them retreat. Yet, despite the powerful impact, both animals fight pretty elegantly. Just notice the refined, small movements of their heads. The exchange of devastating blows starts resembling fencing, where opponents try to find openings in each other's defense. Hook, unbalance, check flanks with short horn strikes, swiftly react to threats, and respond with powerful counterattacks. In a minute, both beasts delivered dozens of blows. They created a cloud of dust while attempting to push each other down the slope. Thus, they simultaneously withstand the opponent's pressure, explore its defenses with short horn strikes, and contemplate how to secure a more advantageous tactical position. These are pretty true warriors. Whose side are you on in this confrontation? Share your thoughts in the comments. Crocodiles can drag wild antelopes or zebras underwater. Admit it, we all fall victim to the stereotype that domestic animals are weaker than their wild counterparts, right? And if a crocodile can easily handle a large wild hoofed animal capable of migrating across several countries, then surely this reptile can manage a domestic cow that peacefully resides in a pen and is not accustomed to the hardships of the wild. Well, just get ready for a surprise. Just like this crocodile, whose hunting beginning went perfectly, it grabbed an adult, well-fed cow in a way that left her no chance to escape. The grip on the hind leg's base deprived the victim of maneuverability, yet the reptile's jaws couldn't slip. All that was left was to drag the prey into the depths, drown it, or simply finish it off. But the cow was clearly against such a turn of events. It just lifted the entire body of the crocodile above the water. The reptile couldn't drag the cow or even slow her down. Helpless, the crocodile hung under the hoofed animal's hind leg, shocked that the cow simply walked out of the water with it. For some time, the cow calmly stood there, contemplating how to climb up the slope with such an unpleasant burden. And when the crocodile realized that the chances of overcoming such prey were as slim as a flea's, it just gave up and crawled back into the water. Certainly, domestic bulls and cows should not be underestimated. European bulls are descendants of wild aurochs, the extinct European bison that, even in medieval times, symbolized untamed strength. After domestication, their descendants have lost about 30% in size over hundreds and thousands of years living alongside humans. But that doesn't mean the domestic bulls became weak. Feeding a giant aurochs was impractical yet they passed their strength on to their descendants. This bull doesn't attempt to attack anyone. It's not aggressive and doesn't make any sudden movements. It simply found itself next to a truck and the animal decided to test its strength. While the vehicle owner clearly didn't expect the bull to effortlessly lift a car weighing over two tons with a single horn. In many regions worldwide, domestic bulls graze freely. Of course, farmers wouldn't allow domestic livestock into the territory of wild animals without confidence that the herd would return home intact. Watch how a domestic bull resists a wild buffalo. 
It's unclear what the animals disagreed upon. Perhaps the buffalo wanted to drive away the herd of cows, or vice versa. Take leadership within it. In any case, the domestic bull shouldn't have been underestimated. Each of its horn strikes pushed the more massive buffalo back, compelling it to retreat. And though they are often watched by shepherd dogs, many breeds of domestic cows don't really need their protection at all. Take the Texas Longhorn, for example. This formidable giant looks pretty impressive, doesn't it? Would you dare to approach it? The males of this breed boast one of the largest and most expansive sets of horns among all animals on the animal planet. The horn span reaches seven feet, over two meters, and that's just an average result. Some horns can be even longer. The duel between two long horns looks intimidating, especially when the gigantic horns of these males clash in a ramming attack. If you think domestic cows only have these horns as decoration, then you are mistaken. The thing is, herds of such cows freely roam through the territory of wild herbivores regularly. Here is a video of a longhorn encountering a modestly horned and aggressively inclined bison. Perhaps the bison simply underestimated its distant relative, but challenging its anger was a clear mistake. The longhorn put up an impressive resistance against its opponent. The entire head of the bison fit between the longhorn's horns. Although the wild beast has more experience in butting heads with other herbivores, the domestic cousin really holds its ground. The two massive hoofed animals engage in a struggle like true athletes. Interestingly enough, they don't attempt to inflict injuries with the sharp tips of their horns, yet they don't surrender or retreat. And this isn't the only such case. Here's another showdown. Longhorns graze freely, knowing that if a cheeky bison tries to drive them away, the male with powerful horns will surely step in to defend its herd and resist this wild beast. Fortunately, both hoofed animals remained unharmed after this duel. The reddish golden bison and the bold longhorn are both animals are beautiful, and we hope that they came out of this unscathed, don't you agree? There is a rare old black and white recording of a longhorn facing off against a wild lion. What can we say? A hundred years ago, people didn't think much about environmental protection and animal welfare. We do not endorse the creators of this video, but thanks to this video, we can see that even against one of the strongest predators on the planet, a domestic bull can stand its ground and even emerge victorious. The initiative initially seems to be on the lion's side. The confined space doesn't allow the bull to attempt fleeing, yet the longhorn here doesn't appear to be phased at all. It immediately puts up an impressive resistance, shakes off the lion, delivers a few strikes with its hooves, and then transitions to active counterattacks. The lion is in shock, looking around as if silently begging to take this unreasonable horned beast away from him. The predator simply doesn't know how to approach. The horns are too wide, preventing attacks on the bull's throat. And powerful kicks with hooves discourage pouncing from behind. Now, the lion regrets being enclosed in such a confined space with such a monstrous creature. After this impressive display of strength, you might think the longhorns are brutes just waiting to be released from tight pens onto the prairie to find victims to attack. Strangely enough, that's not really the case. Towards humans, these giants with enormous horns are very loyal. They are calm and even gentle. An ordinary domestic European bull can sometimes demonstrate with stubbornness that a construction crane is needed for transportation. The longhorns, on the contrary, are docile and kind towards humans. While they can stand up to a lion or a bison, this is a last resort. For the longhorn, a human is a friend. This unusual behavior has led to an increasing trend in their use as riding animals in their native Texas, replacing horses. This is pretty surprising, isn't it? Yet it's a constructive decision. Not only are these bulls docile and obedient with proper training and preparation, but they can also protect their rider. Giant horns in flight would deter not only bears, but entire packs of wolves from a cowboy atop such a colossal bull. Would you like to ride such an animal? Let us know your thoughts in the comments especially if you've had experience with these remarkable creatures. It's intriguing to consider if they could actually be trained to protect humans, similar to guard dogs or herding dogs. 
That would be pretty amazing. While European domestic cows and bulls resemble the Euro-Asian aurochs, on the Indian subcontinent, domestic cows had a different ancestor. And that is the Indian aurochs, originating from the same family. That's why the Indian zebu differs externally from the European cow. Some distinct features of the zebu include a small but pronounced hump, a more straight silhouette of the back, a skin folds hanging beneath the throat. However, since both cow ancestors were relatives, Indian zebus and European cows crossbred successfully. This has led to the emergence of numerous hybrid breeds. Why are they needed? Well, for agriculture, European cows are better suited, as they've developed many dairy and meat breeds over centuries. But zebus tolerate heat better and can go without water and food for an extended period, and most importantly, they possess natural resistance to diseases carried by blood-sucking insects like mosquitoes. That's why zebus have spread worldwide, especially in tropical regions. For instance, hundreds of thousands of these cows now inhabit Africa, and no fewer can be found in South America, although many hybrids of zebus and European breeds exist here. Cattle breeds can vary significantly. Here's a duel between bulls of two breeds, Watusi and Brahmin. Both animals are robust and relentless, but they differ significantly in appearance. The Watusi's horns are gigantic, while the Brahmin has larger dimensions, mass, and power. So whose side are you on? Zebus indeed have enviable health and, as it turns out, tremendous strength. Here you can see a zebu fiercely resisting a buffalo. The distant relative, approximately twice the size and even more massive than the zebu, is overpowered. But the Indian bull digs its hooves into the ground, lowers its head, and resists. It's a case where even in a head-on collision, the advantage in sheer physical strength doesn't guarantee any victory whatsoever. Even when the buffalo prevails over the zebu, the Indian bull stays put and withstands the enemy's blows. Then it counterattacks, forcing the heavier buffalo to lift off the ground and retreat. The zebu literally tosses aside its opponent. These dogs seemingly decided to recall their predatory wild ancestor and attacked the zebu, and this was a big mistake. If the dogs don't behave peacefully like domestic pets, the hoofed animal won't hesitate to retaliate. A few strikes with powerful hooves, and the dog is sent flying in one direction or the other. Each of the bull's blows hit the mark precisely. The dogs didn't expect such resistance from the usually calm giant, and paid the price for underestimating the bull. Which instance of an unexpected demonstration of immense bull strength surprised you today the most? Let us know in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see new fascinating episodes about wildlife.